Hi guys, good afternoon, and welcome back once again to The Edward. I'm your host, Eddie, where in this video, I will now be covering not today's episode, but last week's episode of The Bad Batch, which I finally had a chance to watch that I'm back home from my trip, and it was another exciting one. Now, before I begin, of course, if you're like me and perhaps you're behind a few episodes on The Bad Batch, either by this episode or today's episode, which is brand new, you might not want to keep watching or listening, as obviously I'm going to be going into spoilers and details. Uh, plot-wise and stuff like that. So, you have been warned. That being said, let's jump right back into it. Um, this episode was pretty good. Not as good as the last one, but still pretty damn entertaining. What I really liked about this episode was that it was a perfect reminder or example to both the characters in the show and uh, the viewers that... You know, this is still the very early days of the Galactic Empire, and the citizens of the galaxy were still used to living in a free and democratic society, but that was quickly squashed when the Empire tried to install puppets uh, in power on different planets, as we saw them try to do with this planet. But this senator seemed to have a backbone and uh, a, a good sense of right and wrong and refused to be an Imperial puppet. And even told his people out loud in front of the Imperial captain and her troops that they shouldn't uh, comply with and uh, live as, um, li not live as slaves, but live as like their, um, what's the term I'm looking for? Like, um, shit. Well, I'm losing the term, but basically they shouldn't have to live under the thumb or shadow of the Empire because it's clearly not the Republic. And the way that the captain ordered the clone troopers to move in and disperse the crowd with troops and tanks was a pretty good reminder of that. It is somewhat a little frustrating, this episode, where the Bad Batch doesn't seem to quite grasp the concept that the Separatists and the Republic are now gone and it's just the Empire. So for them to constantly be referring to, like, this senator and his planet as a Separatist place doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me because it's like, do you guys not realize the Clone Wars are over and we've entered the era of the Empire? Like, is that not clear? The Separatists are gone at this point? you know, as is the Republic, but I get it. They were reluctant to go because they didn't want to help an old former enemy or someone they cons considered an enemy. But then it turns out, you know, and towards the end there, where it's like, hey, you know what? Your droid is right. Live to fight another day. And you got to do this off world, off the planet. I do like how um, Omega became a champion at that uh, weird holographic chess game thing. And then she and Sid bonded over that. And not only that, but helped them pay off their debt to Sid, which was one of the reasons why they kept working for her as mercenaries, because they had to pay off all the debt they owed her, like both in terms of money and supplies that they had charged to her name. And hey, Omega was able to be a big contributing player after all. And I hope that this has been a lesson for Hunter, where he learns that Omega should be considered an equal member of the team of the squad, and she shouldn't be undermined and undervalued like, you know, he had treated or displayed towards her in other episodes and of course it was all out of you know a deep loving concern of course you know it's just trying to keep her safe but at the same time hey the kid's a lot more capable than you realize so lesson learned right hunter so oh the other cool thing i liked about this episode because that voice was very familiar to me i'm like who is that voice of the senator, of the senator who stood up to the Empire? And it turns out it's Alexander Sadiq. And a lot of us would know him best as Dr. Um, Bashir from Star Trek Deep Space Nine, one of my favorite Star Trek shows. But more recently to a lot of fans, he appeared as one of the princes of Dorne in Games of Thro Game of Thrones. And uh, it's so cool now that he has played both a character in Star Trek and now voiced a character in Star Wars. So I thought that was a little fun tidbit, which put a smile on my face. And um, overall, pretty entertaining episode. You could argue as filler, but I thought it was a great reminder to both the characters and the viewers that the Republic is gone and it's the Empire's time to shine. And by shine, I mean you know, rule the galaxy with an iron fist and impose it on unwilling citizens. So it'll be interesting to see how the rest of this season uh, portrays or, rem or portrays the Empire and reminds both the characters and the viewers, hey, Empire 
not good. <laughs> so anyway, that's what I thought of this episode. And now I'm about to watch the most recent episode, which dropped today. So as soon as I get this uploaded, I will watch the newest one and then I'll be all cut up on the Bad Batch. And then it's on to evil. I got to catch up on evil. Thanks for bearing with me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode review as much as I did talking about it. <laughs> all right, I'll see you later again. And of course, until next time, may the force be with you.